another needle. So I guess first, I mean, what do you feel like you kind of learned in you know a year on the job here about the job at Pitt? You know, kind of what what the important parts are, or what you have to do going forward, big picture stuff. Yeah, I mean, I just think you have a you know, I have a better feel of the place. You don't really know a place or a person or people that you work with until you're with them all the time. And uh, now having a year, I think I understand our program better. I think I understand the athletic department, the university, the city. Just th there's a little bit more of a comfort level with everything. And as it pertains to the program, I think I have a better feel of, of – of where we are and where we what we need to do to get to where we want to be. Um, last year, you know, you get here, you're just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out today, trying to figure out tomorrow, trying to figure out a roster, trying to figure out all those things. And now, you know, you have a little bit more of a of a plan, of a understanding, kind of like the nuts and bolts of the place and, and what we have to do going forward. Do you look back at last year's team as a team that had, you know, some of the right pieces to be a competitor, but not all of them? I think we had some. Um, you know, the one thing that we had was that I thought we fought. And so because we fought and we competed, then we gave ourselves a chance more often than not. Um, and so I thought we I thought we took the necessary I thought we took steps last year. I thought there was growth and then we saw some development in some individual guys. You know, this summer is about the returning guys that we have making a big jump. Um, and then hopefully when the new guys get here for summer session two, the older guys are able to teach along with us, but more so the young, you know, the guys we have returning in the program, they're able to teach the standards, the values, how to work, you know, the things that are necessary to become a player at this level. And uh, certainly the trip will be important for us. But I think those first few weeks of uh, end of June, early July, are really, really imperative for our growth as a, as a program and as a team. How much do you feel like those guys that you have coming back that already played pretty big roles for you, you know, X and, and Adis and Terrell Brown and, and Trey, how, how much better can those guys be this coming season and just how much future potential do you still see above what we saw on the court last season? I think season? they can all, I think all four of them can be a lot better. And that's the goal is for them to be. We need them to make a significant jump and all of them have the opportunity. All of them at different times last year showed flashes. X probably more, but we need them all to become consistently good players. Um, you know, shooting has to improve on the perimeter for those three perimeter guys decision-making, ball handling, all of those things. And we're working on those. We've been working on those since the season started, since the season ended, I should say. With Terrell, it's about becoming a consistently good player. It's about improving the motor, getting stronger, all of these different things. And he has shown a different attitude already so far in his willingness to work, his eagerness to work, and his eagerness to improve. And so, again, I know we're on the right steps, but I do think they all have a have room to to make a big jump. When you set out to kind of, you know, obviously I think your first recruiting class, you probably would have taken not anybody, but you know, you don't have the opportunity to be picky. When you have a year, it's still not you know full recruiting cycle, but you had more time. What were the the attributes that you wanted to emphasize when you were thinking about maybe regardless of position, but like you know what. What did you want in a, in a person, and, and what kind of basketball players were you looking to get uh, to bring in? Well, the very first thing, even with last year's class when we got here, we wanted to to add guys that have value. We're not going to just add a body. We're not going to take anyone just to take someone. So we say that, hey, we got a big or we got a guard. We got it's someone that we think they either have to be good enough to help us right now or we have to see something in them where we feel like they can be a part and help us become a championship team in the future and, you know, to contend for an ACC championship. Um, and so with that, we, we can't be picky, but we are being picky. 
Um, now, it's not the type of picky that maybe some other programs can be, where they can be selective. But we're going to take guys that we feel have value. If you look at the guys that we took last year, all four of them we felt had value. City for a year, but then the other three value for right now, but also long term. If you look at the guys that we've signed for this year so far, it's the same thing. The very first thing is that we want guys that we think are good kids. That's what we want to have in our program, and we want to build that around. But then they have to have the necessary talent. We feel like they can help us right now, but also when we feel like they have upside where they can get better. We feel all four provide that for us. We look for guys that are naturally competitive, where they feel like they have something to prove. Maybe there's a chip on their shoulder. Um, and so we look at that. I think all four of the guys that we've signed so far, I think they have that. Um, they all have a desire and an eagerness to get better, to improve. When I put together my coaching staff, that's one of the things that I looked at. I knew we were not going to get the ready-made guys. That's just not who we are right now. Hopefully at some point, maybe we can get that. But I, but, but I wanted guys that have upside, and I put together a staff that I feel like that we can really help them develop. I think we showed that this year with X, Trey, and Deese. Um, and so I, I'm excited about who we've signed so far. Um, and about the possibilities that we have coming up. Yeah, you talk about, I mean, you still have some scholarships open. Do you feel like uh, freshmen still on the table? Are you thinking mostly looking at transfers at this point? We're looking at everything. Anyone that we feel like has value. So it could be a transfer, it could be a freshman, JUCO, foreign, whatever. Whatever we feel like has value, a guy that has value and that can add and fit kind of maybe a need. Like right now, we, we need front court. We need guys with size that can play. And, um, again, we feel like we're on some guys that we think that can do that, and hopefully we can close the deal. What did you feel like you learned about recruiting players to come to, to Pitt, to, to play here uh, you know, over the last two years? How have you sort of, I don't know, fine-tuned the sales pitch, or, or just what have you found that, that has resonated with the guys that you have been able to get? I think their their uh, their desire to play against the best competition, to play in the ACC, to have an opportunity to play on the biggest stage. I think that's been appealing. I think the opportunity to come in and to have a chance to contribute right away. I think that's been appealing. I think with the guys that we've recruited for this class, um, some of them, especially the guys late that we got late, I think the energy that they felt when they came up to a game or they saw a game uh, from the crowd, especially the students and the, and the energy they felt when we showed them around the city on their visits or they walked around on campus and things like that. I think that helped and I think that will help probably more going forward with, with, with later classes. Um, you know, I, I think, and then I think our staff, I think especially, you know, They've seen the development of Xavier, of Trey, of Audis, and even Terrell, how much better he got in the, the signs that he showed this year of, of that he can be a really good player. Now it's about becoming consistently good. I think all those things, you know, have resonated, and I think you'll start to see it even more as we go forward. How, uh, I guess, what, what started the planning towards the Italy trip, and uh, why Italy, and, and what do you hope to get out of it? Well, when I took the job, I look to see when we had opportunities to go when's the last time we could have done it last year but didn't really have a roster and trying to move and all those things so we thought this year would be better um with the freshmen that we would have returning and uh some other guys and we didn't know exactly who would be returning um when we started thinking about this we but we knew that it would probably be you know a four or five maybe more man class um, we thought that this would be the right opportunity, the right time to do it. Uh, and then we started trying to figure out where. And we thought about places, different places, but, you know, the educational opportunities, the, 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 the culture of Italy, it's beautiful. Um, and then the competition aspect of it, we thought that would be a, 
a place that would be best for us. How have you seen since since maybe your playing days the way that uh, you know, European players coming to the NBA has sort of influenced the way Americans play and think about basketball? Well, I think that if you go back probably since 92, since the Dream Team, and you look at the impact that the game has had uh, worldwide, our game, what the NBA players did for overseas, I think they jumped and they got better because of the opportunity to play against the Dream Team and to see. And then they had some guys come over and have success. And now it's grown. They're really good. And they're really good coaches. The game over there is very different than ours. Um, the culture of basketball is very different. You know, with the exception of Canada, there's no high school basketball anywhere else. Um, they train. They, they, they train to be basketball players, to be professional basketball players. They can become, they can become professional basketball players early. Um, and so it's, 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 it's been a great impact on the world and certainly on the NBA. And if you look at teams, you know, here in college, you know, you look at teams, they've greatly benefited from the influence of, uh, of talent from overseas. Do you feel like you know, recruiting international players is something you can do here yeah, fit? I did. I did. Have you done a lot of that in the past? I'm not done. Not going over, but my best player uh, when I was at VCU was from Manchester, England. He'd been in the States for two years and was a hell of a player for us for four years and uh, had a couple of kids, had a kid from Cameroon, a couple of kids from Cameroon. Um, I don't think we had any when I was at, uh, at Oklahoma, but yeah, and then, you know, having a chance to do USA Basketball, I've gotten to know some people. So, you know, hopefully, look, we just want to get the best players. Wherever they're from, we want to get them and, and hopefully have an opportunity for them to have success and help us have success. When you have such a young team, how important is the ability to get those extra practices, extra competition before, and then especially with the fact that you're going to start with an ACC game this year? Yeah, it's it's big for us. I mean, it's it's – and we knew that was coming too, so that was part of the process of thinking, okay, this would be good. You know, what it does, I'm a big believer in the summer that I think once the season's over with in the spring and summer, I think guys should be selfish. I think they should work on them. And we put, we sit down with them and we put together a plan of here are the things that you need to improve on. And we take input from them. Okay, you tell me what you thought about this season. What do you think your strengths were? What do you think your weaknesses where do you want to improve? And then we share with them. I share with them what I think. And then we put together a plan of action. Okay, here's how we do this. And so we'll continue to do that up until probably the middle of July. And then we'll shift into team. And the, 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 the thought is, is that the better guys become individually, the better we can be as a team. And so even throughout the season, we do a lot of individual work throughout the season. This will give us an opportunity, these 10 practices, to figure out who we are in July and August as a team and to figure out what parts fit. Where did you get better from the things that we talked about? Did you get better? We saw it in individual stuff, but did you get better? How does that apply to our team? And then when we get back from Italy, we'll take some time and we'll get right back to individual stuff. That will be different from how it's normally done. We'll get back into individual stuff. And as a staff, we'll get together and put our heads together and, okay, here's what worked, here's what didn't, here's what this guy has to get better from where we were in the summer. Did he make improvement? Okay, let's figure it out. And then we'll start approaching the end of September to practice. Obviously, we're very familiar with the conference uh, before you got here. Do you feel any differently about any of it, though, after spending a year as a head coach in the ACC? I don't. I mean, I've always known that, you know, it's the best league. It's the most competitive league. This year we had three number one seeds, the overall number one seed, and the eventual national champion. Um, so it's hard. It's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's, it's a challenge every day, uh, but it's something that we welcome and, and we feel fortunate to be a part of, and we want to make our mark in the ACC. Do you have a, I guess, a a time frame when you're hoping to have Kenna back in action, or is that still? Yeah, you know, it's it's probably going to be a while. I mean, he could miss time and maybe significant time from the season. Um, it was a major surgery, and uh, 
you know, he's responded well, but it's a, it's a long recovery. And uh, so we don't, we don't, we don't have an exact timetable, but I know that it could be significant time. He's going to miss some of the season. There's no question. I don't think there's any question about that, but it could be a significant amount of the season. How much was that something that was bothering him kind of all year last year? When I took the job, it was bothering him. And uh, he complained about his hip, and uh, we, we tried to do some things. I thought, you know, towards the end of the year, that was the problem when he didn't play in the Syracuse game. It started bothering him a little bit more towards the end of the season. As a – as a program, you know, sort of above and beyond what happens on the basketball court, how do you feel uh, about the progress you made, whether it's, uh, you know, getting the students re-engaged in the program or the fan base? It seems like from, from my end, there's a, a pretty been a pretty significant buy-in in just one year. Well, I think we've had tremendous growth. Um, if you look at uh, the attendance at games, especially as we got to the ACC, uh, the students were amazing. The energy in the building, I think, you, I think, I think it felt good. Um, it certainly felt better when I came up here as a, than when I came up here as a visiting coach. Um, around town, you could feel it. In the city, you could feel it. Um, I think I said at the end of the year after we lost to Syracuse, I think what what our team last season did was that they they gave hope. You know, and that's something we need to build on. So I think we showed growth and development, and that's something we want to continue to do. How much do you, I don't know, pay, maybe pay attention is not the right word, but how much do you do you consider that like an important part of what you're trying to do is just as much, you know, success on the court? Yeah, that's obviously you know, kind of the primary job, but that other stuff all, all matters too. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, look, I, I when I took this job, I, I knew it was going to be a challenge. I knew it was going to be difficult. You know, I, I coached against – those guys the year before. And so I knew that, again, it was going to be a challenge. It was, we were young. We had no experience as far as winning, as far as success. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of size. Uh, I knew the challenges of shooting the basketball. I knew that was going to be a challenge. Scoring, I knew was going to be a challenge. And so from the beginning, right away, I told those guys, like, look, we, we the things that we can control, we have to control at a high level. That's how hard we play and and how together we are. And for the most part, I think we did that. Um, I thought we fought. And because we fought, we gave ourselves a chance. And just about every game, we had we had a chance. We were right there. Um, I think what that does for our guys is that it teaches you that you have to go a little bit harder. You have to fight harder. You have to work harder. You have to prepare harder. Your commitment has to be at a different level. Um, your responsibility individually and collective, it has to be greater. You know, your, your, uh, how much you can compete, how much you can commit to work and to all these things that I've talked about, it has to be better. One of the things I knew we didn't have when I walked in here last, we didn't have anyone when we are away from them, the coaches, when they're amongst themselves in the locker room, we had no one that could say, this is what you have to do. Man, this is how you beat this team. Man, this went up. We didn't have that. We have that now a little bit. And so, you know, that's something. But all those other things, they were great. I mean, the energy that I feel when I walk around the city and the excitement, you know, I'm pleased for that. That's a big part of it, you know, hearing the students, feeling the students, feeling their passion and energy. I'm excited about that. And now, hopefully, we can take another major jump this year. Um, and so I, I'm excited about the challenge. Of it.